Hi, my name is Alan from Alan Real Property. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about HDB, most recent cooling measures announced on 19 August 2024. I will elaborate what are the measures and also how will it affect eligible HDB buyers due to the lower loan to value ratio or LTV. And ultimately, how will it affect HDB sellers like yourself watching this video? Without further ado, let's dive into the discussion. HDB announced cooling measure to cool the HDB resale market just days after the National Day Rally. This is not unexpected. There are two main pointers. Firstly, the loan to value limit for HDB housing loan will be lower by 5 percentage points from 80% to 75%. Let me go to the reason why HDB announced this measure. As mentioned in its press release, the government closely monitored the HDB resale market. Earlier rounds of cooling measures and the ramp up built to order BTO flat supply have helped to moderate the increase of HDB resale prices. HDB resale prices grew by 4.9% in 2023, down significantly from 10.4% in 2022. However, resale prices still rose by more than 4% in the first half of 2024. This was driven by strong broad based demand coupled with some supply tightness as fewer flats reached their minimum occupation period this year. To further stabilize the HGB resale market and encourage flat buyers to borrow prudently, the LTV limit for HGB housing loan will be lowered by 5 percentage points from 80% to 75%. The LTV limit for loans granted by financial institutions remain unchanged at 75%. Here, what does all this mean to the layman? Okay, let me explain. For example, let's say a HGB resale flat costs 500000 Based on the earlier LTV of 80%, if you are taking a HDB loan, the maximum you can borrow is 400000 or 80% of the purchase price. This means the remaining 100000 or 20% has to be paid either by cash or CPF. Assuming your HFE is eligible for up to 400000 this means you can finance the 80% loan fully with your HDB loan. After the announcement, the LTV is lowered to 75%. This means the maximum you can borrow is 375000 or 75% of the purchase price. This also means the remaining 125000 or 25% has to be paid either by cash or CPF. Assuming your HFE remains at 400000 this means you can finance the 75% loan fully with your HDB loan. Everything else remains the same. Except that you need to fork out an extra 25000 cash or CPF more. This also means if you don't have that much saving, you will have to work backwards to buy a flat that is 25,000 less at 475,000. Here, you get what I mean? However, what if we base on another scenario? Assuming you want to buy a 1 million HDB resale flat, your HFE is 700,000. Based on the earlier LTV at 80%, the maximum you can borrow is 80% or 800,000 of the purchase price. This means the remaining 20% or 200,000 has to be in cash or CPF. Since your HFE can support up to 700000 this means that 100000 shortfall plus that 200000 down payment, which work out to be a total of 200000 has to be in cash or CPF. After the announcement, the 75% LTV means that your loan is kept at 750000 instead. Since your HFE is 700000 this means there is a shortfall of 50000 which will have to be paid by cash or CPF. If you add back the increase in down payment at 250000 this means the remaining 300000 will have to be in cash or CPF anyway. For those that have cash and strong CPF, business as usual for you. In fact, this is a good measure I feel to encourage financial prudence, as HDB loans should adopt what is already being practiced by financial institutions. 5% cash, 20% CPF, and 75% loan. This has been the default since. As mentioned by HDB, the enhanced CPF housing grant quantum will be increased to improve affordability for lower to middle income first time home buyers with the revised EHG plus the existing CPF housing grant and proximity housing grant. First time home buyers will receive greater help in their flat purchase. In short, this is what HDB means. Eligible first timer families who buy a new flat will receive up to 120,000 in EHG on top of the significant market discount on the flat price, while single will receive up to 60000 in EHG. For eligible first-timer families who buy a resale flat will receive up to 230000 in housing grants. 
comprise the revised EHG or up to 120,000, a CPA housing grant or up to 80,000, and a PAG or up to 30,000. For eligible first timer singles who buy a resale flat, they can receive up to 115,000 in housing grant. Wow, I read ready, uh, I also blur. Let me put things in simple English for you. For those who are hoping to receive the full grant at 120,000, please check out this table. If your average household income is below 1,005 per month, then you can receive the biggest ang pao. Otherwise, please check out your revised grants based on your income range. Anyway, the government approach is very targeted. They will give the most subsidies to the lower income segment so as to give them a leg up in life. That is why I feel this is a good system because I benefit from it too. Remember, I start off with a three-room HDB resale flat too. So please don't say they never help the poor. They tax the rich more to uplift them. This is modern day Robin Hood. Lai lai lai, what is your thought on the cooling measure to the market? For HDB homeowners watching this video, care to share your views with me? Will it crash the HDB resale market? Or will this red hot market, which I have previously mentioned before, continue to chong ahead? Seriously, I don't have an answer for you. However, after assessing the adjustment to the LTV, it shouldn't have too much of an impact on the resale market. Since buyers are planning to buy, they will just go ahead. For those who are financially tight, they will surely roll back their budget to account for the extra cash involved. But for most buyers already on bank loans, this practice of carving out 25% for the down payment has already been the norm for the longest time. For those financially better buyers, if they need to buy, they will still proceed as planned. There will be minimum changes. Here, how about the impact of the increase in housing grants? Well, the increase in grant only benefit the lower to middle income, first-time home buyers, and they must be Singaporean too. This means the minority few, such as first-timer and singles, they are eligible. They will usually go for the smaller flat up. This means the impact on the overall market, in my opinion, is very negligible. So back to my title, HDB cooling measure. Can it even cool the red hot HDB market? Any cooling measures are still cooling measures. Singaporeans listen very well. The market will see a slight dip and temper off. COV should come down to a more realistic level. Buyers will be standing by the fence. Seller will be holding on to their price, as usual, after any measures. I have a feeling the Q3 RPI index will even surpass the Q2 index with a rising COV market. This move market will need to take drastic medicine to slow it down. However, this is a tricky question. If you crash the market, many homeowners will not be happy. In typical fashion, they will bring back what LKY has said before. Your never HDB drop. value will never he drop. Was speaking at the launch of Here, Tanjong let's Tanjong enjoy this video clip once again. On Saturday. 85% are in HDB homes. We intend to keep the values of these homes up. They don't never go down because they'll be renewed, the surroundings will improve, and as Singapore prospers, GDP goes up, the value of the homes will go up. However, if the market becomes a free market without intervention, then this is also unhealthy as any property bubble means many will have to pay a hard price for it. This is a tough question. We need more that is why becoming a housing minister and, uh, is not easy. Support that sort of I personally uh, feel uh, XMND minister uh, Kong Bu Wan is one of the best the housing ministers today. Need, uh, Some say his English like mine cannot make it. But as long as he get the job done, yeah. who cares? So, so another five That's all. Hope you have enjoyed another episode on HDB Matters. Between now. Before we sign off, for those that have yet to register for SPD Ability Walk 2024 on the 1st of September at Asia Civilization Museum, please come with your children. Let them embrace what is sharing and caring. I'm sure this will be a memorable experience for all, which textbooks or tuition will never ever teach you. I'll be there with my family. See you soon.